welcome to FO Talks. With me today is Leo Vivas, an old friend. He has uh, been an author uh, at Fair Observer for a very long time. He is our top Latin America expert. He's been a professor. He has taught uh, in top institutions around the world. Uh, he has studied uh, in Europe, in South America, and has taught in North America. So a real global figure. Welcome, Leo. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Atul. It's a real pleasure to you know, talk with you. Thank you, sir. So, Leo, you're from Venezuela, and Venezuela has been in the news for a long time. Um, it has been going through one crisis after another for the last few years. Paint us a picture of what is going on. Uh, well, uh, Venezuela had... Uh, by around uh, 2016, it had a uh, an economic collapse mm -hmm. that was uh, that you know that was a result of of, of uh, you could say of a mismanagement of the economy during the Chavez years mm -hmm. uh, because you know they had this huge inflow of of of, of dollars from from the oil prices. Yeah. Just and you know if I can quickly stop you. Many of our listeners and viewers in Asia would not know about Chavez. So just paint them a picture of Chavez, Hugo Chavez before you go on so oh, that sure, they get sure. the context. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, Hugo Chavez is a, a former, he was, he was a, a former paratroop uh, commander and he, uh, he he had a failed coup at the at the end of last uh, century, and then he he when he was uh, uh, when he was uh, freed from prison, he uh, ran for president and he and he won the elections, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and and after that, he made a, a a number of changes in the constitution, trying to uh, concentrate uh, power on the hands of the executive. <clears throat> and uh, and he tried to create with the with the help of uh, of uh, the windfall uh, profits from oil, you know, to to try to tilt the 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 region in uh, uh, in favor or or let's put it against the United States, you know, the, the question of the empire and, and all all that criticism. So. And this is, it will be important to to our problem here that we'll discuss about the the uh, the dispute with uh, with Guyana. So the question is that uh, when when he passed away, that was in year uh, two thousand twelve. Uh, the the following year, uh, his former foreign affairs minister Nicolas Maduro he was elected by a very very slight margin, and. Uh, uh, that was in 2013, but you know, three years later, he the he had inherited the crisis from from Chavez. There were no longer the the, the enormous amount of of uh, of of inflow of of, uh, of dollar from oil, and uh, so you had a hyperinflation, uh, a huge uh, humanitarian collapse, and 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 a, a humanitarian crisis. That led to a number of, of millions of Venezuelans fleeing the country. Uh, a number that today is uh, roughly around eight million people that have left the country. So that is the condition that brings us to this problem that has been happening with Guyana. So Leo, I have some numbers here. I was going through numbers, and it turns out inflation spiked to 63,374.08% in 2019. In November 2021, 65% of Venezuela's residents lived in poverty. This number apparently came down last year to 50% and remains at that level now. And... Um, Venezuelans, millions of them have been going hungry thanks to what people now call the Maduro diet, named after Nicola Maduro, the current president. So uh, the telling tale, perhaps, um, is not just in these numbers, but the fact that 
the Venezuelan GDP is now a quarter of what it was in 2014. That means it's shrunk by 75%. Yeah. And my question to you is, how is the country coping? How, is, how are people managing to live in such extreme conditions? Why aren't there riots on the street? Why isn't Nicolas Maduro out of power? Well, there were, there were huge protests mm -hmm. first in 2014 and then uh, in 2017 when he tried to, mm. to produce some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, funny elections, uh, which ended up, you know, being a whole fraud. And the question is that repression was brutal. It was brutal. And, it's a military uh, regime now. It's a military regime. No, no, no. It's a dictatorial right regime, uh, open, openly. Mm -hmm. uh, not as bad as others like Nicaragua, uh, which is it's even ter more terrible. But it is a dictatorship. And the question is that um, what, 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 is, what is happening today is that, uh, you know, the, the economic situation has become a bit better than the one you described. Inflation rate today is lower than that. Uh, the question is that uh, the, the regime finds itself with, uh, with no future, no clear future in sight. And, uh, and uh, uh, also there has been <clears throat> negotiations with the opposition. Mm -hmm. uh, as recently as October, there was a there was an accord that was uh, signed in Barbados. Yes, uh, that, and the opposition uh, has a new leader now as well. Yes, yeah, the, yes. I'm coming to that. So yeah. this uh, uh, accord uh, opened the way for free and freer elections, mm -hmm. presidential election to take place next year by the the by the second semester last next year, and the question is that. Uh, when when this agreement was signed, the opposition was totally in shambles, totally divided between you know the the more extreme, the the moderates, those mm. that that thought that there could be negotiation, direct negotiations with the government, and and find kind of a, a, a you know a cohabitation. Let's put it that way with the with the with the government, and so the opposition. Uh, created and decided to to have primaries in order to uh, have a candidate for a uh, presidential candidate for next year and 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 there were and the government thought these because of the disarray uh uh among the the opposition that they would have not real consequence but uh, but but it was the contrary there was uh, the numbers were approximately two point of five million people that voted in the primaries under pressure of the government, all the all, all the uh, against all the obstacles of the government, and 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 one candidate which used to be the most radical uh, uh, in the opposition won the uh, primaries with ninety three point five percent of the votes. So she she was a huge landslide, and this was has produced is you know. All the opposition coming together under one leadership, and it and now it's all of a sudden the opposition that was in shambles is now strong. Mm. So, and tell uh, us about this new candidate a little bit. You said Maria, she's radical. Yeah, well, Maria Corina, uh, Maria Corina, uh, Maria, Corina. Ma Maria Corina Machado. Machado. She is the daughter of uh, of of one uh, captain of industry in Venezuela. Who used to be because he was uh, expropriated off his properties. He had huge uh, steel uh, production concerns. At some point, with a with a, uh, an agreement with uh, some Argentinian firm, they bought the the one of the largest uh, steel concerns in South America. That mm -hmm. is, uh, that's near the the zone you know in the southern part of Venezuela near. The Esequibo near Guyana. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, it was uh, he was expropriated all his companies, and uh, and at some point she became very popular because at some point 
she was elected to the National Assembly. And at some point when uh, Chavez was alive, he came to, to the National Assembly and she said, you know, in a, in a speech, she said, uh, expropriating is stealing. And he said it to his face. So after that, she became very popular. And then after that, she, you know, she promoted abstention in some elections, and she's had a very, the, the most uh, strong opposition against the government. But now that she is uh, the leader of the position, she has moderated her views, and she's trying to uh, bring everybody together and try to find a way out, a negotiation with the government that allows for free and fair elections. So sure. that is the... So speaking about elections, and you've mentioned Esequibo, uh, on December 3, 2023, Venezuela held a referendum on the issue of Esequibo. Now, this is a large region of Guyana that um, uh, Venezuela claims. 98% of the votes counted um, or authorized Venezuela to use all means, including military force, to redraw the border. Now, I've spoken to Glenn Ojeda Vida, our mutual friend, about it on Sunday. Uh, and um, he sketched uh, the history of the border dispute going back to the 1899 Paris uh, Arbitration Award. Yeah. And uh, uh, this matter has been, suspension, has been suspended since Guyana got its independence from the British Empire in 1966. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, there's a podcast on this uh, and people will listen to Glenn as well as you uh, and you're Venezuelan. So my question to you is, what is this referendum all about? Could there be war? Well, uh, I would say that the referendum, they had uh, they had several, uh, you know, objectives, the referendum. Hmm. Uh, I think the first is uh, was you know the, the the question is that the story of the Venezuelan uh, diplomatic moves during the Chavez years and during the Maduro years have been pretty murky in the sense that at some point uh, you know that this zone this area that is in dispute uh, Guyana was not uh, supposed to give any concessions for mining or for oil, you know, that is not, that is part of, of the agreement. Mm -hmm. But Chavez at some point said, uh, and he, when he went to Guyana, he, he said, oh, well, Venezuela will never oppose if Guyana makes any investment that will help, you know, the, for the betterment of, of the Guyanese people. And so, and they have, have tried at some point uh, they've tried to uh, kind of uh, make this a, a, a non-problem and, and, and finding that, you know, that there would, could be uh, an, an amicable solution. The, the, difference, the difference is that in 2015, there were huge oil reserves that were found by Exxon. And we're, we're talking here about 13 billion uh, barrels uh, in in reserve, reserves and uh, and, we've covered and they that, Leo, as you know, we've covered Guyana and we've covered the the discovery of oil reserves and we've even covered how everyone's playing there, including the Chinese. Absolutely. So yeah. so so that that is a reason why this problem of the referendum became uh, because you know trying to first to keep face. Uh, after all the blunders, diplomatic blunders they, they had in the, in the recent past, uh, then prepare to a uh, worse scenario that, you know, the uh, when, it, when, when this issue is discussed at the uh, uh, International Court of Justice, if Venezuela loses, then you, you know, they could argue that we did all we could to avoid that. So I, I think it was a, you know, a, a, a normal move that you would do as a government. And then uh, thirdly, the question is, 
that after the primaries that I've just mentioned, the this showed a weakness at, uh, for the government because it's a government that, as you mentioned, there is an economic crisis. Look, the popularity of Maduro is, you know, borders uh, nine, ten percent. It's very low. It's a very unpopular government, and mm -hmm. there is no one in the government that could that does even match those numbers. So, uh, so that means we, ninety percent of the people, ninety to ninety-one percent of Venezuelans, want Nicola Maduro to Maduro to go and want to put an end to this military dictatorial regime. Yeah, well, uh, I don't, I don't think that all the people that don't uh, like him would like him to go. But mm -hmm. let's say that a huge majority, I would put it that way, a huge majority of Venezuelans want him to go. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe not the eighty percent, but you know, a huge majority. And and the question is that they have that. So and then the opposition had these primaries that were very successful and with a new leadership now. Uh, and 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 look Maria at Corina Maria Corina and she's going everywhere and you, uh, wherever she goes you know she's kind of a rock star and and you know those things uh do worry uh governments even even dictatorial governments of course so, she, she's a mass leader with popular support oh absolutely and uh okay so in a sense the 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 calling of a referendum you know, trying to, you know, get the flag around you was to try to 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 call Venezuelans for a national, uh, nationalistic uh, issue and try to uh, have the government to lead it. And they were expecting, uh, you know, uh, an interesting level of voting. But you know, the 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 first. The, the the there was no idea there is no idea how many votes there were because there was no observation there were there are there was no trace of the voting all the mechanisms that are done normally during elections were not done during the referendum so nobody knows how many votes there were and the the government claimed that there were 10 million voters but uh it's funny because at the best time, at the you know the best uh, voting that the government has had in its history is seven million. <laughs> so, in a situation where it's very uh, you know unpopular, it's claiming to have ten million votes. That's very unlikely. Yeah. So, so. So uh, the numbers seem to be cooked. Oh no! Oh, absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. and nobody, nobody believes them. Mm -hmm. And the question is also that, you know, during the golden years of Chavez, Venezuela was, you know, not only respected because it, it you know, had a, a strong leader, but also because of the, uh, of the, uh, of the oil uh, profits, uh, Chavez was able to, to do a number of things. Like in the Caribbean, he used, he subsidized the uh, oil uh, for most of those countries in the Caribbean, for the non-oil, which, which send doctors to Venezuela. Yeah, no, no, no. And it's been, you know, Cuba. It would send a million barrels a day. So what Cuba would do is that Cuba would use forty percent of those uh, uh, of that for its internal needs, and the other sixty percent it would uh, would sell at the you know the spot market. So it mm. was a for Cuba, it was great. And in 1982, 1982, Fidel Castro signed an agreement to support Guyana's claim to the Essequibo. So, so you have Cuba, which is the, one of the uh, most important partners of Venezuela supporting Guyana. You have uh, China, which is a very important partner, having 25% of the, the rights to to exploit in in that area of, of the 13 you know billion barrels and then you have the United States because two big companies in the United States Exxon and and uh and uh Chevron are are involved and and you and you have other countries you know like uh 
like Brazil? France. France. France is interested because Total is mm, uh, is interested total. in and 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 be part of a be part of a, a deal there. So uh so Venezuela is very isolated and in economic troubles, isolated with problems in in you know internal problems and even with a very weak situation internally because in the February this year the the government uh, indicted, or let's say uh, fired, the president of the oil company, accusing not him but accusing his uh, entourage of uh, of having uh, spoiled, you know, or got hold of uh, you know thirty six billion dollars, and uh, and this was a huge scandal, and and this person. Uh, uh, he was uh, he was a very important part of the government. So as a result, the the government is very much weakened because he he was there was there was done not because he was you know stealing money, but he was a possible contender for Maduro. Mm. So it was a way to you know to to get rid of him. But as a result, the, the government didn't didn't uh, end up stronger but it ended up uh, ended up uh, weaker so that is that is a situation that we are living now so i i don't think venezuela has has a a good chance i don't think there is going to be a conflict i don't think venezuela mm. will invade uh, uh you know they they've created some symbolic kind of uh, decisions after the referendum but but uh, but but no, but I don't see the possibility of a, of a military conflict. So this seems to be, as per your analysis, a ploy to boost Maduro's and the regime's uh, yeah. public support to whip up nationalism and l profit of it. Uh, it. It's almost as if pa patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. Yeah, it is. Uh... Although I I do think I do think that you know uh, for uh, Venezuela that that uh, there is a the feeling you know nationwide feeling that Venezuela uh, has lost has, has been this uh, part of its territory has been taken from it because you know if we go back to mm. to the nineteenth century when uh, you know this uh, uh, whenever you had the end of colonialism, and you know that better than me. Uh, you had this Utiposidetis, uh, uh, the jury, which was the the uh, the kind of international, uh, not law, but international agreement that the colonies that became states would have the same borders that it had as colonies. And this was used in Africa. It was used in most of in, in all Latin America. And the question is that there were some problems uh, in Venezuela between the territory that was in the maps, in the original maps, because there was a portion of that that was murky, that was not well designed. And that was how the how the British used that in order to to try to negotiate and try to uh, push Venezuela out of the territory. And it took a long time, as you mentioned, a long time. And then 1966, uh, you had this uh, disagreement that there would be uh, a an, uh, negotiation between the two parties, which never, which never occurred. And that mm -hmm. is the reason, because it never occurred, that is the reason why we are now facing uh, in in uh, next year, early in the first quarter of the next year, we are facing a decision of the International Court of Justice. Okay, so let's talk about Essequibo. Who lives in Essequibo? Are they Gu Guyanese? Are they Venezuelans? Or are they perhaps indigenous groups who don't see themselves as either? No, uh, these are, uh, you know, uh, Guyana has a very small population. Mm -hmm. uh, it's around, you know, less than one million. Yeah, and they uh, all live near Freetown. Yeah, and uh, in this part of the Essequibo, 
there is around uh, 200,000 inhabitants. Mm. And these have and these are Guyanese. They have mm. their ID cards. They are Guyanese. They have always been Guyanese. So mm. uh in a way if you had uh a decision by a court or by a negotiation that this would belong to Venezuela, you would have a problem because you would have kind of the the Falklands syndrome. Mm-hmm. Because the people that live there are Guyanese. So the question is here, uh, apart from the dispute and, 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 you know, who's right, who's wrong. Uh, the question is how to solve this. You would, you should have, you should be able to, to, to get to a point where you could have a solution like, you know, the Alsace-Lorraine uh, solution that took place between Germany and France that, you know, is it is a portion of territory that was one year it was German, the other year it was French, and it moved constantly. You know, as so many other borders have have moved constantly in Europe. But you know, there should there should be a broader agreement, uh, independent quite independently of of who is going to you know have the the final sovereignty to make that. Uh, a territory for development. I mean, you could find a way to go above and, and beyond the question of the sovereignty and, and find a, a solution. The, the only problem or the main problem here is oil. And that is mm-hmm. the reason why uh, this uh, situation is not very likely. Yeah, because it's not just a Sekibo, it is the waters next, you know, adjoining that area. That area is two thirds of Guyana. And Oil is big money. Yeah. And it's and it's not and it's not, you know, because that is a river. The reason why it's called Sekibo is because there was a river as Sekibo that was the the original uh you know uh, b- limit uh, for for the the uh, the of uh, what used to be the general captaincy of, of uh, Venezuela in colonial times. Uh but the northern part and most of the oil is offshore. It's not in land. It's offshore. And and you know and and that is that is you know and, and that is as as in dispute as the as the as the land is. So yeah. but here's the irony. Venezuela doesn't even have capital to invest in its own oil reserves. It can't even pump out its own oil, refine it and sell it. And it has the world's largest oil reserves. And yet it is trying to get more from Guyana. Wouldn't it be better for Venezuela just to manage its economy better instead of having a military misadventure? Yes, well, yeah, I agree, absolutely. Uh, You know, the question here is that uh, and, and that is a factor that we haven't mentioned. That is, uh, uh, what is the role of the U.S. in all this? And mm-hmm. because part of part of part of the the, the economic uh, doldrums uh, in which Venezuela finds itself in today, uh, at some point during the col- during the financial collapse of Venezuela, there was an additional factor there that were economic and financial sanctions mm. from the U.S. Certainly. Which affected PDVSA, which is the oil company, PDVSA. which affected, uh, you know, marketing the oil. So Venezuela was not allowed to market its oil, but also affecting the financials of the company and affecting the financials of the government. So all these sanctions uh, have put Venezuela in an even worse position to, to be able to recover. Uh, they are similar to the sanctions against Cuba. Yeah, pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question is that in the in 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 the agreement that was signed in October that I mentioned at, uh, at the beginning of our conversation, a part one of the reasons uh, why the government would be able would be willing to go to free and fair elections was because at the same if if those things those uh, actions uh, took place. The United States would start uh, eliminating some of the sanctions, and that's what happened. So, the, you know, Exxon is has been allowed 
to produce in Venezuela. So uh, there has been a partial uh, elimination of those sanctions. And the, the U.S. has been saying, we'll eliminate more and more as, 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 as Venezuela progresses toward a free and fair election. And if it doesn't, we'll put the sanctions again. So it's, it's been used as a, you know, as an instrument, as a tool uh, for, for uh, democratizing Venezuela. So the question is that, look, some of these sanctions have been uh, eliminated and Exxon is producing, but very little of that money comes to Venezuela's coffers. First, because Venezuela has a huge, the debt of PDVSA is huge, it's monumental. And the debt of the country is, you know, three or four times more than. And the question is that if you are going to produce or you're going to invest in oil, first you have to pay your debt because nobody is going to put fresh money on if you had that level of an indebtedness. So uh, that is a reason why uh, even if Venezuela got the possibility of, of of you know, for some miracle, Venezuela got hold of the reserves of uh, of Guyana. It wouldn't be able to produce anything because, it, as you say, it's not even producing oil in its own territory. Mm -hmm. So, one more thing uh, on the U.S. point: United States Southern Command has said it would be carrying out joint operations with the Guyana Defense Force. Lula has said this is not time for redrawing borders in South America, in Latin America. So it seems internationally, or let's say it seems even in the Western Hemisphere, the two biggest powers, the US and Brazil, do not like what Venezuela is doing. Nobody, nobody likes it. You, uh, Lula has, has dropped, he mentioned at some point that if Venezuela invaded Guyana, it would call its ambassador. And, uh, mm. and you know, Cuba is against, is uh, supporting Guyana. As you mentioned, those uh, military maneuvers, they already took place. And there has been movement by the military, the Brazilian military to the northern, to the northern part near to the border. So there, I don't think the, the, the the good thing, you know, the good news is that in two days, there's going to be a meeting by Venezuelan president and uh, and Guyana's president. Apparently, apparently they, uh, Lula, and I think Cuba and others, they, you know, talked to both parts and those parties, and they agreed. Uh, Maduro and uh, uh, Mohamed Irfan Ali, who's the president of of Guyana to meet um, December 14th. So in two days, they're going to meet. So probably, you know, this has, that seems to be, uh, you know, uh, the possibility of a conflict. Maybe it'll be just a, uh, a storm in a glass. Ah, a storm in a teacup, as the British would yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Now, um, we, we've uh, discussed Guyana, we've discussed uh, Venezuela. Uh, we've talked about uh, the charismatic new opposition leader. Um, and we've talked about how there were negotiations in Barbados. So given all these developments, where do you think is Venezuela headed? Is there a chance of a free and fair elections? Is there a chance of Maria taking over? Is there a chance for sanctions to go away once that happens? Uh, well, the situation regarding uh, Maria Corina today is that she, like a list of other opposition leaders, have been banished from running for I... any any position. Uh, so one of the one of the uh, aspects that was agreed in the Barbados Accords were that these people would be able to you know that that the government would take steps for to allow uh leaders opposition leaders that were uh incapacitated to participate 
to allow them to be part of the political, to run. But yeah, you know- Especially Maria Corina, because she's the unity candidate. Yes, it, it, you know, they didn't talk about uh, names, but, but, mm -hmm. but it's intended especially for her. Mm -hmm. uh, but still the, the government, you know, what it did was a tricky uh, response because what they, what they did is that they uh, asked every one of these candidates that have been, uh, uh, in a, how do you call it, uh, that have been not allowed to run, to go to the, uh, the Supreme Justice Tribunal and, and uh, pledge for its, uh, for its, you know, situation. And, uh, but, you know, that would be the admission of guilt. And the question is that she was uh, incapacitated because of, uh, because she did this or that. And there has never, never, there has been a paper that was given to her. Never was there any, any uh, evidence brought to the court. So it's something that it's, you know, like words in the wind. Somebody said that she was, and there was no evidence, no paper evidence of anything. So mm -hmm. that is the reason why she is not going mm -hmm. to go to the Supreme Tribunal. We don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and the great problem, uh, Atul, you know, is that, uh, as, I, as I like to put it, if if Maduro allowed Maria Corina to run, it would be like, you know, putting his hands and say, you know, cut me. And I, you know, I, 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 give, I give up mm -hmm. because there is no way he can win an election. So, and of course they're not gonna do it. So mm. my, my, my point, my point and, and some others that have been, with, with whom we've been discussing this, is that you have to find kind of a, a solution uh, that gives Chavismo as a movement, first, the right to exercise the power wherever they had power. You know, in the governorship, they have the majority of governorships, they have the majority of, 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 uh, of mayors. That's one thing, to grant that there will be, there will be no action against the people that are in power. Second, that you have to negotiate, even if there was somebody, maybe if not Maria Corina, Maria Corina or any other that eventually mm. would win an election, even you would have to grant them some part of power, just like in other places. Say, okay, keep the minister of uh, defense and and. Chavismo, you know, chooses the Minister of Defense. It could be the same as it is now. Uh, you know, there has to be some... And and then there are other things, you know, there are uh, investigations by the International Criminal Court against Maduro and, and, and uh, you know, the, the, high, the high rank of politicians and military leaders in Venezuela. Uh, there is there have been two two investigations by the uh, uh, the the human rights council uh, very very strong uh, with very very strong uh, criticisms of of uh, of crimes against humanity uh, so there has to be at some point say okay we're gonna those process Venezuela is gonna is not gonna pursue them. So you have to grant, you some know, political immunity, some political immunity for 20 years or, you know, that that's the way it's, it's happened in so many places. And I think those it's things, similar to the Chile situation with General yeah, Pinochet. General yeah, yeah. So or maybe not not to the extreme of, of South Africa, because that was that was kind of a very, a very uh, specific uh, situation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, something where you can, you know, you can grant in, uh, immunity for for some time, and 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 you know, not to try to to destroy everything that has been built by 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 Chavismo in the last 
uh, 25 years, 22 years. So yeah. there had to be that, that, that has to be on the table. But the question is that we don't know if, if, if they prefer to go through that mm. and have, you know, the security of having a future in, in Venezuela once Venezuela recovers, or if they are going to choose the Nicaragua solution. In Nicaragua is uh, after Cuba, but well, Cuba is different because it was product of a revolution. In yeah. the case of Nicaragua, it's a different tradition. Yeah, uh, in Nicaragua, uh, that was until recently uh, a, a democracy, very weak, but you know it was a mm -hmm. democracy. Now it's 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 much worse than than Venezuela, and mm -hmm. people are there. You know they they take your nationality, they throw you, they expel you from the country. And they they take your nationality, and uh, you know they are against the church. They're against any. You know what happened? You know that uh, Nicaragua. Uh, there was a Nicaraguan uh, woman who won Miss Universe, and you know, so Nicaraguans had a had a, at least one reason to be happy. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like Argentina winning the World Cup, right? So. Last week, you know what happened? They put in prison the person that ran the Miss, the, the Miss Nicaragua uh, organization. He was put in prison. Why? I don't know. Okay. Just because it is something that, you know, that is that has its popularity apart, apart from the government. Yeah. And you know that would be an extreme which we could be we we could be going if 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 there is no path to democratization. Oof. So two options. One, of course, is the Chile solution, wherein have a deal, and the other option is Maduro's regime clamps down and um, makes life even worse. Even worse. Venezuelans. Yeah. I see. Well, I mean, uh, could there be uh, a, a changing of the guard as we've seen in Argentina? We've had uh, someone from the right, far right win. Yeah. Well, who knows? Uh, I am, you know, I'm an optimist. Mm. And uh, uh, I think that until I until it comes a point where I don't see a solution, I will always think that there is the possibility of a solution. Even uh, in in as dark situations as the ones that country is living today. So it hinges upon Mar Maria Corina Machado and Nicola Ma Nicolas Maduro making a deal. Yeah. All right. So we can hope for that. Cross our fingers. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely to have you with us, Leo. Uh, we'll have yeah. you back. we'll we'll have more discussions on Latin America. Always good to talk to you. Uh, sure. As you know, we jokingly say, and we mean it as well, that, that we try to make sense of the world. And with yeah. you, we'll make sense of Latin America. Yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep trying. Uh, so thank <laughs> you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay, bye, take care. Join the conversation at Fair Observer and subscribe to our YouTube channel.